Inspire, motivate, challenge. I want to get into the healthcare part of the conversation okay. now. Yeah. So I mean, working ten years in a pharmaceutical company. That's, yeah. I mean, that's no joke. We put in the, <laughs> yeah, we put in the work. We put in the work. Yeah. So can you just share, like, what, what was your general experience, considering that you are such somebody who is obviously a creative. Yeah. And you know. Somebody basically you are creating this don't stand up comedy mm. uh, content creator all that stuff but yet you work in what I would call maybe a very different kind of industry yeah. industry so you worked there for ten years what was your general experience like what impact did they have on you yeah okay so um, the type of comedy I do I talk to a lot of professionals like a lot of professionals watch my my content so sometimes you don't want to sound you want to know what you're talking about mm. it's comedy but people pick they pick the little things so let's say we're talking about there's a video i did recently of um women's menstrual cycle a pastor was saying that the uh, women just act that way <laughs> and, uh, it's not like uh, so i was trying to let him know about estrogen and the hormones that make women act that way it was comedy but it was still some sort of education so at gsk i did a lot of like uh, research so um when you for the apis the leaflets you give out those little references you have to go and search the reference and highlight so you tend to do a lot of reading and i remember i used to pr uh, work on um, training materials too for the new medical reps okay yeah 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 so i was in charge of that printing preparing binding so working in the working in that field really helped me grow as a person i i got to see i got to i got to meet a lot of people a lot of intelligent smart people in fact my guy is interviewing me now <laughs> it was one of them so how working there was was an eye opener it really it really like sometimes when i talk people don't think i'm a comedian they don't they say you are too smart to be a comedian so it was all those experiences Mm. that kind of shaped me into okay. so Fantastic. is it safe to say that you know if you don't work in the industry yeah. there are certain maybe attitudes or biases that you may have yeah do you think that if you didn't work in the industry you probably would have those similar kind of bias that like the regular person has? yes yes I, I i i do i do there are some sometimes when people say some things i'll be like no that's not true i've been in the industry i know what <laughs> what supplies i've been here i've been here i've been here i've been here so, yeah. so as, a, as, as a creative in the industry I, I really try to use my creative side to make like when i joined gsk yeah mm -hmm. there were there were some things that were not done but like like um when we we're going for conferences there was no interesting things yeah, though really yeah really straight it's just straight 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 <laughs> but i introduced like montages for different things like yeah. it was yeah it made yeah. the conferences more fun. fun yeah so if you go to a pharmacy today yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's okay. yeah if you go to a pharmacy today and you want to buy a drug a drug like how does your working in the industry for 10 years how does it impact that so i walk into a pharmacy <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a whole lot of arguments <laughs> so i say give me um i i, I would say give me a generic version of augmenting mm -hmm. and they'll be like eh, Oga, eh, this one this one this one this one this one i'll be like how much is this She'll be like how much is this what company is this from what company? No, i don't trust this take this back i don't trust this take this take this back okay, okay give me so it's, it's, it's the pharmacist will be looking like are you a pharmacist <laughs> <laughs> so i so like okay i said do you have any any medication for headache or any medication for malaria and they will bring uh, one composition i'll be like no i don't want this competition give me uh, atimetalumefantrine or give me this combination this combination this combination and they will look at me like you're not a pharmacist why are you trying to teach me my job <laughs> like yeah in fact i have like mdex oh really yeah i still read mdex i still read about yeah, medications okay. i still read i still have a book where like it's like um it's 
prescribe drugs for certain ailments. So I read all those things. So most of the time when I go to a pharmacy, when I talk, they look at me like, are you a doctor or a pharmacist? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's yeah. interesting. So another another angle I would say is like, um, are you? Would you say you are more because you work for a multinational company? Yeah. So are, would you say you are more partial towards like branded pharmaceutical products or that that one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I, no, I I I was. I'm, I'm partial towards branded pharmaceutical products because I know most of our brothers just go to China and they bring <laughs> different. <laughs> things and um yeah and i try to look out for the genuine sticker mark where you scratch oh, okay. yeah 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 M-A-M-S. m-a-m-a-s stickers where you scratch and send the text i try to look out for that too and i try to look at the name of the name of the drug i i tend to go for specific company brands i don't okay. so if it's not gsk roach like companies i know i don't really go for uh, uh, Amazon, Green Life, those specific brands. I don't go for Chukwemeka and Sons. <laughs> <laughs> Malaria. <laughs> Malaria medicine. Once you work in the pharmaceutical industry, yeah, yeah. you work in de facto yeah. or pharmacy. Or pharmacy. Yeah. What I'm saying is, are you inclined to recommend people to go to the doctor? Or you know how most of us just yeah. go to the pharmacy to, yeah. to self medicate? Like, yeah. How has that also impacted your view in terms of? health or treatment seeking behavior okay so for people i'll say go to the go to the doctor for me <laughs> <laughs> for me if i'm feeling this way i know the drug to go to the the, the, the pharmacy to buy because most of the time I, i've gone to the hospital i go to the hospital and the doctor is writing and he's writing a medication that i won't even buy hmm okay yeah and i'm telling him uh, this is not what i want this is not you you, you've done the test Uh, you told me it's malaria i've taken this drug before Mm -hmm. and i relapsed after two weeks why are you recommending this to me again Mm -hmm. exactly so most of the time i find out i get into an argument with the doctors (laughs) after a test i know the medication to take but you're giving me a medication that i've already taken and doesn't work for me like one, I went there and he, he prescribed um, there's this injection that makes my body itch. Chloroquine. Uh, chloroquine. And I'm telling him, I can't take this. I can't take anything <laughs> like this. And he was like, ah, who is the doctor here? Yeah, this is the doctor here. Yeah. He gave me the medication. He gave me the injection. And I started itching. And I remember, I told, see what I told you. I told you, I know, I know, I know these things. I cannot take this medication. But also for people, I, th- I advise them to go to the doctor. But when they go to the doctor, they find out that it's still what I told them to go and buy, that the buy doctor the will doctor still. Also, right. Yeah, so the yeah. most important thing I tell them, go and do a test first yeah. before you self-medicate, if you will self-medicate. But self-medication is bad. <laughs> All right. So you also worked in the vaccines department, yes. right? Yes. Uh, organization, all that stuff. Yeah. So I would also like to know how working in the industry has impacted your view of vaccines. You know, considering uh, all the control, there's a lot of controversy surrounding vaccines, vaccine, especially yeah. during COVID. COVID, yeah. When COVID happened. So what's your thought about vaccines uh, in general? And also for, COVID? for me, I think vaccines have saved a lot of lives vaccines have like if you think if you think about um, some diseases that we've had we had growing up and we got vaccinated for them they've disappeared they, mm. they no longer exist but my problem with vaccines is it can't be rushed There's, there needs to be a lot of r and d that goes into it a lot of years perfection mm. and a lot of uh, clinical research a lot of uh, testing before it can be put out that was my problem with the covid vaccine it felt like it was just rushed because mm. if you say you wanted to bring a vaccine for covid where where, where is the vaccine for influenza because <laughs> yeah there was a, yeah, you should have thought about the vaccine for the common cold a long time because covid is like around that so it's still mm. the same thing so i felt i wouldn't take the covid vaccine now like I would say you didn't take it. I wouldn't take it. But I think there is a vaccine for flu. There's a flu vaccine. There is? Yeah, there is. Does it work? Yeah, it does, but it's not it's not long term. It's like the vaccine for malaria. Exactly. Yeah, you have to keep maybe every two years. You have to keep taking it's not even up to two years. Yeah, yeah, you have to take it like constantly. So it's not so what's the point? It's a healthy short term. Yeah, that's it. 
<laughs> okay, so my I won't take the COVID vaccine. I won't take it because I, I feel it wasn't perfected. It was rushed. It was rushed to make money. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was so rushed. despite all the years that you work in the power industry, they were able to convince you to take the COVID vaccine. Yeah. No, I won't. I won't because. I have a, my valid reasons. If they had put in like three, four years into developing the vaccines and done a lot of clinical trials mm. and gotten a lot of data, I would take it. I, I, I live my life on facts, not emotions. <laughs> okay, so I guess there's, there's an influence and then there's a... I mean, I'm saying the pharmaceutical industry has impacted you. The yeah, if I didn't work, facts. if I didn't work in the pharmaceutical company, I, would, I probably would have taken the vaccine. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. If I didn't work in GSK and you know about clinical trials, oh, R and D and all that stuff, I would have taken the vaccine because I'd be like, ah, they brought me a vaccine for COVID. <laughs> <laughs> that's interesting. Like it, that's a very interesting point of view mm. because you because you I mean, there's definitely a lot of people who are who they have not worked in pharmaceutical industry, but yeah. based on the information yeah. that they see online yeah. you know, from people, then it's influenced them to take whatever decision yeah. they take it, whether they will take it or not. Mm. So, so that's interesting. So, what are your thoughts about you know the healthcare industry so far, like in, in Nigeria? Mm. Like people, when people get sick and how they get health um, um, access to healthcare in general, what are your mm. thoughts? Nigeria, we have a long way to go. <laughs> access to good healthcare. You just need to step into a hospital, and it's shambles. First off, our healthcare professionals. They are not professional. <laughs> well, you worked with a lot of them. I worked with a lot of them. On one side. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they are not, they don't, they don't. Like, for Christ's sake, I saw a video of a woman in pain giving birth and a, a nurse mm. was recording video and doing for TikTok. You can't try that in the UK. You lose your license. Mm. <laughs> you go to a hospital, somebody will keep you because you have not paid money. What happened to the hypocritical oath? Save the person's life first. Before, uh, this is hypocritical. I've been a hypocrite. Uh, uh, and this like hypocrite. Uh, uh, still the same. <laughs> uh, so, our healthcare system is still, it has a long way to go. First off, testing. Mm. <laughs> it's just individuals that are trying their best to. <laughs> just like everything in Nigeria, it's just individuals that set up labs and try their best to to I think it's more money driven than anything else the healthcare system in Nigeria it's not about saving the li lives first it's about how much like Solomon Dalong was just complaining the former minister of health he's just complaining that he was he, I think he got into an accident then he was in yeah, sorry the former minister Solomon Dalong was just complaining the former minister of um, sports yeah. he got into an accident then they took him to the hospital. Then he was unconscious. Because he was unconscious, they said nobody to pay the money. Mm. They left him there for four hours until he was able to gain partial con consciousness to, trans to pay the hospital bill before they treated him. And that is how many Nigerians die. Now, because he's no longer in office, when he was in office, mm. they would say, ah, minister, minister, they would treat him. But now he's no longer in office. He's not like the common man. He's now experiencing what the common man experienced. Mm. So, for me, the healthcare system, I think it's, it boils down to the way we treat each other. And uh, we really don't treat each other well. We really don't. Because I don't see the reason why somebody is shot and brought to your hospital, you keep the person there. When the police are said, treat first, then call the police. <laughs> but you'd leave the person there to die. So, I don't think there is a healthcare system in Nigeria. We're just mad trying to... We're trying, but there's no healthcare system in Nigeria. Okay, but well, when you were working in, um, in GSK, mm. did, did, you, did you have the privilege of health insurance? Yes, I did. And there was a lot of stuff struck out. <laughs> yeah, so, you go to the hospital, they don't want to run tests for you. They tell you have malaria. <laughs> they get, they can come on, do a test. Find out what is wrong with me. They just write malaria medicine and I give you and say go. So yeah, exactly. Malaria and typhoid. I give you, I give you one generic uh, amoxicillin. And I could be buying GSK's brand of amoxicillin. Why are you giving me this crap? 
So, that's yeah. it. Mm. So, I, I mean, I want to really delve into health insurance a little yeah. bit and get your thoughts. Mm. So, the thing about um, a lot of the foreign countries where their healthcare system will say is a little bit better than ours. Yeah. A lot, a lot better. Like a lot of them is driven by the fact that people have health health insurance. Coverage. Yeah, yeah, health coverage. Right. So, what are your thoughts? You know, the um, uh, former president actually signed a bill mm. that made health insurance mandatory, even mm. though I, I, that's not been executed. For mm. me. But what are your thoughts on making health insurance mandatory? I think it should. I think it should be made mandatory. Everybody should have one sort of health insurance coverage or the other. Because you cannot live your life and just leave it to chance. Mm. 